guys, welcome back to my channel. So yesterday I went to my first ever Summer in the City event. It's a YouTube event for vloggers. It's over a whole weekend in London at the Excel Centre. And yesterday was the Friday and I went to the Creator and Industry Day. YouTubers or creators who want to go and find out how to make a living from doing YouTube, how to monetize their channels, how to work with brands, how to work with management. And for the rest of the weekend, it's going to be more about going along, meeting your favorite YouTubers, lots of famous and well-known YouTubers will be there. It was my first ever Summer in the City event. I knew there was going to be some sort of trade show area. I think I was kind of expecting some brands to be there who wanted to work with vloggers and maybe some management companies, some PR. It wasn't like that at all. I think the trade show area is more set up for the weekend. Some of the stands were like selling sweets and merchandise and t-shirts and little fluffy toys and little hair clips and so it wasn't really anything that I was specifically interested in I have to say um, against one side of the wall were all of the desks where the actual YouTubers are there selling merch and there was huge um, barriers so I'm assuming that that's going to be absolutely random today and tomorrow but obviously yesterday it wasn't that busy yesterday and there weren't that many people there queuing for that there were a couple of good stands Blogosphere magazine had a stand which I was really keen to go and have a chat with them because I absolutely love the magazine and there were some nice other little stands as well. So what I thought I would do today is talk you through actually what I learned. So this really is a vlog for people who want to learn some technical information about vlogging. So there was various sessions throughout the day. So the first thing is in terms of monetization for your YouTube channel, AdSense is not a guaranteed monetization stream really. Sometime recently, the rules for monetizing your YouTube video changed like overnight. And a lot of the bigger YouTubers saw a, a drastic, drastic drop in the AdSense earnings. For small YouTubers like me, like I didn't even know this had happened, so it made no difference to me at all. But apparently the change was all about the keywords. So if, for example, your YouTube video had the word kill in it, like Superman kills Batman or something, then that video would not be eligible for monetization and YouTube would just take off the monetization. So I think a lot of YouTubers whose videos might, might have been out there for a while and videos they've been earning a lot of money from, suddenly that revenue stream just stopped. So it's something to be aware of. Yes, you do make some money from the AdSense, but with YouTube, the main place to make money from is by working with brands, uh, collaborations, becoming a brand ambassador, sponsored content, that kind of stuff. The AdSense revenue, unless you're like Zoella, you know, or, or like a huge, huge, huge YouTuber, I don't think you're ever gonna make an actual living from AdSense. There was a lot of management companies there and they were saying about the things that are important in terms of working with brands and what brands are looking for. They highlighted a couple of things, but really when, it, when you cut through the crap basically what it boils down to is subscriber numbers one person said oh yes if you're a small youtuber with less than 10k subs basically forget about it they, they talked about engagement and demographics and all that but I think really what it boils down to is your subscriber count if your subscriber count is low or less than 10k a lot of the bigger brands and management companies won't even consider really working with you because you haven't got that mass following that they're looking for in order for it to be worth their while to put the advertising dollar with you essentially. Demographics are really really important so if you guys don't know check out your analytics for your channel there's loads of information in there the analytics tool is absolutely fantastic on YouTube actually you can find out loads about your audience and then put it all into your media pack if you want me to do a separate video about media packs, YouTube media packs, let me know. But demographics is really important. So if, for example, 40% of your audience is here in the UK, obviously UK brands are going to be more likely to want to work with you. If the majority of your audience is based in Timbuktu, then maybe only brands that sell in Timbuktu are going to want to work with you. Another key and... In my mind, it's more important than sub numbers, it's engagement. For my channel, actually, so I've got like 1,150 subscribers, but my channel is just about to hit 200,000 views. Now, obviously, my 1,100 subscribers have not watched my YouTube channel 200,000 times. My audience is much larger than my sub count indicates. So my average views per video is a lot higher than you would expect for a channel of my size. So I think brands are starting to look at that. I think they're starting to understand that engagement's really important as well. But the feeling I got, and I might stand corrected, but the feeling I got was it's really about subs. 
it's about the number of subs that you have. Another really interesting thing that I picked up though is Facebook. So somebody asked, I think, which social media platforms in terms of helping to promote your channel are really important. And the resounding answer came that Facebook is absolutely crucial. Now my Facebook is horrendous. I will link it everywhere and I would be oh so grateful if you'd go and follow me on Facebook. Little plug there. Apparently Facebook is going to do something about monetization. Not quite sure I understood it, I need to do a bit of research on it, but apparently you need to really, really work hard to get those numbers up on Facebook because that's going to be another revenue stream or another way of monetizing your channel. If you guys want me to do any um, social media promotion videos, let me know because obviously as a marketeer I do know like a few little tricks of the trade that I'm quite happy to share with you. So again, let me know in the comments if you're interested in that at all. If a brand does contact you and they want to work with you, a lot of the YouTubers and guys that were talking were saying, oh, you shouldn't just accept free products and samples and do reviews just based on that. That it devalues the entire YouTube community and brands are not going to be are going to be less likely to pay YouTubers to make content if there's a huge raft of YouTubers making content for free. Now, I kind of don't agree with that statement because the level I'm at now, I am getting brands contacting me, but none of them want to pay. They're happy to send me product for me to review, for me to see whether I like it or not, but no money's changing hands at the moment. I'm just not there yet. And to be honest, I want to get free samples because at the moment I am buying and paying for every single thing I'm reviewing on this channel and it's costing me a fortune. So yeah, if a skincare brand say, right, I'm gonna send you some products would you have a look at them and if you like them, do a review on them? I'm gonna do that. So yeah, I didn't quite agree with that. And I think sometimes these YouTubers kind of, the bigger YouTubers lose sight of what it's like to be here in the very bottom ranks of YouTube. How brands communicate with them and how brands communicate with me is very, very different. So they are like, oh, we get brands emailing us all the time and we get so many offers and I say no, 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 no to all of them and blah, blah. Mm, it's not like that at this level, do you know what I mean? We don't, uh, my inbox is not inundated with brands emailing me every single day going, oh, Sally, we love you, we'd love to work with you. At my level, it just doesn't happen like that. So I'm gonna take the free stuff when I can get it, quite frankly. What they were saying though, is if you do want to start working with brands and earning some money from it, it's important to make sure you know your value. So the first thing you do if a brand contacts you and says they want to do something, is go back to them and say, right, what's your budget? They'll probably come back to you and go, what's your budget? You go back to them and say, no, what's your budget? So always try and get the brand to tell you what their budget is in terms of working with you. Remember at the end of the day, they're gonna get a very, very good deal. They're paying peanuts for advertising to their exact target audience who are incredibly engaged. It's much more cost effective than doing an advert on television or radio. So what you're offering does have tremendous value to those brands. Again, if you want me to cover this sort of topic in more detail, let me know in the comments because obviously with my marketing hat on as well, I do kind of understand the relationship between brands and advertising and how important it all is. If it's a brand and they want to do a collaboration with you, if it's a brand that you already already love and you're really passionate about then obviously that's fantastic you've already kind of got that affiliation with that brand if it's a brand that you've not worked with before or that you're not sure of ask them to send you a sample before you sign a contract to do any review there's nothing more embarrassing than being sent some product and then you've said you'll definitely do a review and you don't like the product for whatever reason they might not agree with your skin but you just might not get along with them then you're kind of stuck you've been paid do you do a bad review? Do you just say that you like it when you don't? Because if you do that, people are gonna know you're not telling the truth. That's the thing with YouTube, you can't hide anything. So before you put pen to paper and sign anything to do anything, get some samples of the product, test it for yourself, see if you do really love it. If you get a brand to agree to actually pay you to do something, get it in writing. So if they offer you a contract, obviously read it over really carefully. Make sure that everything in there that is a deliverable, you're prepared to do, that you understand what they are requiring of you. Wherever possible, try and get 50% of the fee up front in advance. Payment terms are normally 30 days, so what you could be doing is spending all that time creating your fantastic content, it goes live, and then you don't see any money for like over a month. But in the contract, make sure you write down like, do they wanna see the video in advance? Are they gonna have any editing rights over the video? Can they come back to you and ask you for changes? 
all of that stuff just make sure that it's in there in the contract if there's no contract you just write it out on an email and just get them to clarify that what you think they're asking for is correct and then you both agree on it and then at least you've got something in writing should things not quite go to plan. There was a few interesting things about working with brands actually that I hadn't really thought of before. So one of them was, if a brand approaches you to do one sponsored video or whatever it might be, have a think about how you can work with that brand in a more of a long-term way. So if you can do a video and then some sort of follow-up later on or some sort of comparison video. But see if you can come up with some ideas to do a string of things over a period of time. By doing that, you're building a longer-term relationship with that brand. Other good thing about doing that is your audience will see that you're mentioning that brand more often and that clearly you do love it and you are passionate about it. And then they'll be more likely to actually make that purchase or go online and find out more about the brand as well. I would love to work with L'Oreal, for example. Hi, L'Oreal, if you're watching. No. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to just do like one review of one thing. I'd want to work with them over a period of time and review all of their products and do all kinds of different things with them. So if you do get approached by a brand, think about long term than just like a quick fly by night one off thing. Some YouTubers are actually getting equity in the business that they're promoting. So obviously if sales increase massively, then they'll get a, a, a proportion of sales. So like have a share in that business. I think that's for much bigger YouTubers, but it was an interesting thing. I hadn't really thought of that before. So I just thought I'd just mention it. Be wary of performance-based contracts. So if somebody says, right, we want you to do this video and we'll pay you 10% now, and then we'll pay you 10% when your video has had 100 views and 10% when your videos have 500 views. At the end of the day, you're doing the content, it's your time, it's your effort, it's your brand as well, remember, and your audience. So you're putting a lot on the line doing a video promoting a brand. So that's what the fee is for. The fee is for your time in doing it and then buying your audience. Whether that video gets 500 or 5 million views, that's kind of just what what's going to be will be you can't control that and if you agree to a performance based contract and you put all the time and effort in and it doesn't get the views you won't get paid if a brand is doing a huge big campaign you can ask which other youtubers they're working with when those other youtubers are going to be putting out their content because kind of what you want to avoid is 50 YouTubers all on the same day doing the L'Oreal clay mask review because the audiences are probably going to be following different people. If we're all putting out a video on the same day, the audience is going to be like, oh my god, and they're not going to watch them all. If you can, get in your contract that you want to be the first person to put your content out because obviously that's going to get the biggest hit. If there's lots of other YouTubers working on it, maybe you can do a collaboration so you can join forces somehow and promote and work together to, to link your material together so that actually the audience then goes on a journey around and all the different YouTubers and the content is different every time. If you're working with a brand and you really want to knock their socks off and really impress them, try and come up with a more creative way of doing or incorporating their brand review into a video. A lot of other YouTubers might be doing something that's the bog standard. Try and think about something a little bit outside the box that will make your video stand out. And a key thing that was mentioned as well is even when you're doing a sponsored video, a paid for video, the main thing that your audience should be thinking about was, God, that was a really, really good video, not oh, another sponsored video or they're trying to sell me something. They should just be enjoying the video. A subject that was raised was about transparency and being transparent with your audience when you are doing an ad or sponsored content. If you guys don't know, the best practice is to put hashtag ad on the thumbnail, in the title, and in the first few lines of the description. They're meant to know it's an ad before they click on it. So that's why you've got to have it in your thumbnail as well. It says no point hiding it, it's gonna be so obvious anyway. And actually you can get into a lot of trouble if you're not really, really transparent about the fact that you're getting paid to do that content. So if it's appropriate at the end, even say, oh, thanks very much L'Oreal for sponsoring this and for sending me these products or sending me to the Maldives to test your sun cream. Hi L'Oreal! Another thing that was mentioned was in terms of the language that you use. Obviously, most brands are not going to want to work with YouTubers who are constantly swearing or putting out really, really risque content. If that's what you're doing and that's what your channel is, then absolutely fantastic. 
but obviously that does mean that brands, most brands are gonna be less inclined to want to work with you. They need you to have mass appeal. And if you're swearing or you're very crass in the way you're talking, you're gonna rule out a huge swathe of the population who just don't like that kind of language or that kind of stuff. So if you wanna swear and do whatever you wanna do, go for it. But remember the knock-on effect in the long run. If you are gonna to wanna to work with brands down the line, they might not wanna work with you. When you're putting content out there, just be mindful of the fact that you're putting it out there for the whole world to see forever. Once you've released something on the internet, be it a picture, a statement, a video, or anything at all, even if you pull it down, it's out there. And your brand is important as well. What you're building is your brand. Again, if you want me to do a whole session on branding, let me know because branding is so hugely important. On that same note, if you work with a brand and things don't go quite according to plan, if they don't treat you particularly well, if they don't pay you, if they don't do what they say they're gonna do, whatever it might be, don't badmouth them, whatever you do. Because that brand will see you badmouth them and will never ever work with you again. But also every other brand will see that you've behaved that way as soon as something has gone wrong, that you've slandered that brand or said negative things about that brand. So any other brand in the future is gonna think twice before working with you. I think to a lot of YouTubers getting management is like the holy grail. The time that you probably need management is when you're getting so many emails in so many direct approaches with brands that actually you can't keep up with it. You're getting a lot of contracts in and you're making a significant amount of money from those contracts. At the very least, you need legal advice and a good accountant because obviously if you're getting sent stuff for free and you're taking money, you need to be registered as a company and you need to be doing all of your tax and all that kind of stuff. So it's really important that you get financial advice. And then if you're signing a lot of contracts and working with a lot of huge brands, remember these brands are multi-million pound brands and then it's just you sat alone in your little bedroom or whatever. So make sure you've got some legal advice but when you get to that kind of stage, that's when you kind of need to get management because what they'll do is they'll coordinate all of that for you. What I don't think management do is help smaller YouTubers to grow. And I think that's a bit of a gap in the market. Anyone, if you're listening, I think that some management companies should come out now that will help promising rising star YouTubers to make it because it's so crowded and so competitive. It's actually really, really hard to raise your head above the parapet and actually get noticed in this YouTube world. I think that's it. I think that's the main crux of what I learned at Summer in the City. If you guys know of any other YouTuber conferences or vlogging conferences, please do let me know in the comments because I am keen to learn. I'm keen to meet more YouTubers and get out there and kind of socialize and network. If you know of any up north, you know, I'm in Leeds, there don't really seem to be a huge amount of these kind of things up north. Or if Summer in the City are wanting to come to the north, please do because there's loads of YouTubers up here and you know, we want to attend these things as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up if you have. Please share the content across your social media channels. Subscribe to my channel, click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything out. So until next time, thanks for watching guys. Bye. Thank you.